Do you feel like the things that you love are being denigrated? Do you feel like this younger generation is taking the things that you've always appreciated and just destroying them? Well, we're going to talk about why that might be. We're going to talk about how we can put that in a proper perspective. And we're going to do it while we're freezing out here in Grand Traverse Bay. So let's get this thing rolling. We are all very different people. We come from different walks of life. We have our own stories. We have different dreams and aspirations. But there's something that binds us all together. At the end of the day, we are all trying to beat the clock. We are all trying to find our way. Hi, my name is Carl and welcome to SMA. Hi friends, welcome back to SMA. Here we discuss the issues, build connections, and inspire the lives of those of us going through middle age. And we're doing it on a rather blustery day out here on Grand Traverse Bay. It's cold, it's windy, Michigan sucks, but I have a, a Florida trip coming up, so hopefully we're gonna turn this thing around. I was having a conversation with my son a few months ago about La La Land. And Jake really loves that movie, and he made this comment about how La La Land is a much better movie than Raiders of the Lost Ark. And this just blew my mind. I felt like I'd failed as a father. And here's what Jake thought about it. You know what? Instead of me telling you what Jake thought about it, how about I get Jake out here and we'll talk, we'll talk to him. And we'll ask Jake what he thought about the movie. All right. So today is a special day for you. For me, not so much. Today we're going to interview my son who is about to uh, destroy my favorite, one of my favorite movies of all time. So, Jake, my pride and joy, tell me about what it is about Raiders of the Lost Ark you think makes it, is overrated a fair term? Yes. All right, tell me, tell me why you think Raiders of the Lost Ark feels overrated to you. That's uh, well. Okay, look at this, the camera too for me. <laughs> First of all, the is probably I will acknowledge it is probably great for its time. I will thank it for all it has done for movies today. Oh, however, I feel nowadays the character of Indiana Jones is just not a not a one not a compelling one. He's not one that piques my interest, makes me think about. That he's not a very thought-provoking character. Um, he's not very complex. He doesn't have those. Um, uh, he doesn't have a mix of flaws and uh, and positive qualities that a complex main character should have. Okay. What about the movie itself? What do you think about the movie? So you're not that big on indie. What about the movie? Do you think the movie? What do you, what do you think about the movie? What do I think of. The I felt like the rest of it I just felt was very just generic. Like I've seen, I've seen it before just, and done more interestingly. So how about the action scenes? What do you think of the action scenes of the movie? They're fine. It pro they're probably good for its time, but nowadays I just feel like it's it's slow. They throw punches fairly slowly. I feel like the I've heard a more visceral kind of brutal violence that makes it the action scenes memorable. However, I don't really care that much because I don't really care about the character that much. <laughs> if I cared, if I liked the character of Indiana Jones, I found him an interesting character. Then yeah, I would be scared when he gets and he's always come so bloodied all the time. What about the face melting scene? You gotta like the face melting scene. That was a cool effect. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Is there yeah. anything about the movie you like? There might have been one or two jokes that I found funny, but I can't recall them. So why would you, because I'm going to talk about why La La Land makes me feel old. Why would you say La La Land is a better movie than Indiana Jones? I, I felt, I felt an, a connection to the characters. They felt, they had those, they felt complex, they felt flawed and had, the, had their good qualities towards them. I felt like the film acknowledged at the end that, that they were, in fact, flawed. And I, I thought it was an interesting story about two people... Um, who have, who follow who have dreams, and do they follow each other? Do they want to be with each other? Or do they follow their dreams? That uh, was an interesting story. All right. So, 
I should say that Jake, he's 18, he just graduated, and Jake is one of the people who I'm probably closest to in the world. We've read comic books together, we've watched movies together, uh, we've gone to Comic Cons together, we do a lot of stuff together. We work together now. We work at the same uh, factory together. So we've spent a lot of time together. So when Jake told me this thing about Raiders of the Lost Ark, I went between, should I kill him? Should I kill me? I, I just feel like this is this whole thing has fallen apart. I have failed as a father. So Jake, thank you for coming on. Thank you for trashing my movie. Anytime. Get out of here. All right, so that's Jake's opinion on La La Land and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Why he, why he loves one and why he was going to trash the other. And so I get, it's got me thinking because this really made me feel a little uncomfortable as a father and a little old, frankly, that something that I love so much that meant so much to me, my son, who we'd, we'd done all these things together, just didn't like. And it got me thinking about why is this? Why does Jake feel this way about something as awesome as Raiders of the Lost Ark? So I kind of kind of just start to, to work it through and you know for Jake, Jake's grown up with the Avenger movies. He's grown up with the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the Star Wars movies including the prequels and that and so he's seen movies that have built on the things that had come before them and Raiders of the Lost Ark is one of these foundational things that people have built on. Things like Firefly um, and Guardians of the Galaxy. These sorts of things have built on Raiders of the Lost Ark and that foundation. And Jake has seen all these things and to him, Raiders of the Lost Ark, just not that good. Not as good as the things that have come after it. So for Jake, something like um, La La Land, which was new to him, which was the type of, type of movie he hadn't seen before, it was different. It was engaging and he really enjoyed that. Whew, okay, I had to get off the, off the bay. A little too windy, a little too cold, and I'm old and it bothers me. Okay, so that's my son and how he feels about La La Land and why that bothers me. So let's take another example, something else um, that makes me feel old, that makes me feel somewhat like my opinion is a little bit devalued. We're going to call this person LeBron James, just to throw a name out there. Um, if you're a basketball fan, you probably know quite a bit about LeBron and who he is and what he means to the game today. If you were to follow my Twitter feed, which you'd be one of like six people who would be doing such a thing, you would see that I oftentimes find myself in debates with other people uh, about LeBron and what he means to the NBA and whether or not, most importantly, is LeBron the GOAT? Is he the greatest of all time? A little background on me. I grew up in Chicago and I started watching basketball because of Michael Jordan. A buddy of mine said, you got to check this guy out. And so in 1985, I started watching him. Um, and I fell in love with basketball because of Michael. And I have so many memories of my, my youth and even into my 20s and 30s tied into Michael. When he had his first game, big game winning playoff shot against the Cavaliers, I jumped up and down so loud in my bedroom that I shook the downstairs chandelier and my dad yelled at me. Which was a great memory, though my dad probably less so. When he had his last big game winning shot against the Jazz in the NBA Finals, I remember my wife, who's now holding this camera, jumping into my arms. It was a great moment. So I have all these things tied up into Michael and what Michael means to me. So now, we have these two things going on, right? We have, you know, the, the millennials, the 30-year-olds and younger who have grown up with LeBron. LeBron is their Jordan. He's the guy who means everything to him, to them. And then you have me, who, is, who has Michael Jordan, in my generation, who is the guy who we think is the greatest. And now these two things are colliding. So here's the thing. Here's why I think this bothers me so much. I think with... You know, Michael, because he did grow, because growing up he meant so much to me, that now when younger people come by and say, well, LeBron is clearly better, it, it's not just an attack between two basketball players, because really, who cares about two basketball players? It doesn't matter. But what it really is, is it feels like it's an attack against me, against my belief system, against the things I love, against my memories, against what I grew up with. So then we're on Twitter and I fire back, no, LeBron's terrible, and here's all the reasons why. 
the person on the other end of that tweet hears that and they think this person is devaluing me. I love LeBron. He means a lot to me. If you're a Cavaliers fan, you grew up in Cleveland, him winning that championship is probably one of the greatest memories of your sports life. And here's this idiot on the other side of the internet attacking you. And so now we've got these things that are going back and forth. We're not listening to each other. We're not understanding each other. And somehow we got to work on that. And frankly, I haven't been that great at this. You know, if you think about, so Michael I view as the greatest of all time, but when I made Michael in my head the greatest of all time, I devalued the guys who came before him. Bird, Magic, Kareem, Russell, Will, all these guys, I devalued that. And we need to do better than that. You know, same thing with Raiders of the Lost Ark and La La Land. As much as I love Raiders and I thought it was a great movie, you know, I kind of devalued the movies that my dad grew up with. My dad was a movie fan. He liked to show me these black and white movies, things like Bringing a Baby and Duck Soup, all these older movies. And I'd be like, eh, kind of boring, black and white. I was doing the same things to my dad that my son is now doing to me. And the, we could go through lots of examples. We could talk about, you know, pop music, Taylor Swift, right? We get to go through all these different things and how how a younger generation argues with an older generation. But what I'd like to talk about, instead of pointing out all these different things where we, are, where we disagree, is let's talk about how we can get along a little bit better through these things. Let's communicate better and maybe listen to one another better. So I'm going to take a page out of another person's playbook from my era, and that's Michael Jackson. I'm going to start with the man in the mirror. Okay, I think I need to do a better job of listening to other people in debates and in conversations. I think I need to do a better job trying to understand what these things mean to them and try to do a better job communicating with them. And I think if I could do that, then maybe the communication in general would be a more compelling thing. We might grow a little bit and we may have a little less arguments. And hey, if we could even pull this stuff into politics, even better. Take three. Finally on this subject, one thing I would like to really get out of this is try to figure out why I invest so much of my personality, my self-worth, who I am in things that don't matter. Why do basketball players matter too much, so much to me? Why do movies matter so much? Why are all the things, why is Android our app? Why are these things so important that, that I would invest my personality and my self-worth into them? And try to change that. Try to make those things less important and make the things that are really important matter more. And I feel like if I could do that, I might be a little bit better of a person. I might find myself in far fewer arguments than what I do now. So that's your homework for the week. I want you to tell me what are the things that you invest in too much. And let's talk about down there in the blah, blah, below, what we can do to invest less in those things, to hear other people, to communicate more clearly, and to have better, more beneficial relations as we talk, particularly online, but in our real life as well. Let me know how that goes for you, and I'll check those down there. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you for stopping by. Please leave a comment in the blah, blah, below, and let me know how I'm doing. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you want to be notified when I have a new video releasing, ring that bell. We'll see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel.